As King Saul, motivated by blinding jealousy, sought to kill David, David had a conversation with Jonathan, and Jonathan seemed to be unaware of the virulence of his father's hatred against David, giving his father the benefit of the doubt, I suppose. But David spoke to him and he said, your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said, do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. So Saul was hiding from Jonathan his attempts to kill David. But then he goes on to say, and this is in 1 Samuel chapter 20, he says, But truly, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. You know, as we think about our lives, especially in the day in which we live, hurtling it along a highway at 70 miles an hour, perhaps, with uh, cars coming in the other direction, only feet away from us, and a moment's inattention, perhaps, looking at a cell phone or changing the dial on the radio, or perhaps someone who is inebriated with alcohol or on drugs, a little shift, um, a head-on collision, and it's all over. And I often think of this, that sitting in a plane six miles up and wondering, what am I doing here? It seems like such a precarious position to be in. And yet all around us, there are things that can cause sudden death. And that's why it's so important to be ready to meet the Lord. Because once we have our eternal security sure, then death really doesn't hold the same fear to us. Not that we want to die. We'd like to go on living. But we've learned that the serpent that is in the room with us has lost its sting. And so it's not a nice thing to have death nearby. But all death can do now for the believer is usher us into the presence of God. Many years ago now, I was invited to speak at Mountop Youth Camp in North Carolina. I think it's Sourtown Mountain, very beautiful spot overlooking the Blue Ridge Parkway. The mountains are gorgeous and at such a lovely location. We were invited, the young people and I, were invited to go down the mountain and to attend the watch night service, the New Year's Eve service, at uh, Shannon Hills Chapel in Greensboro. The bus we were riding on had seen better days, and Larry Batts was driving. The manager was in a little car behind us, and uh, just before we started out, he asked if I would pray and ask the Lord for protection, which I did. And as I prayed, I apologized to the Lord for all the times that we had asked for safety at the beginning of a journey, but had not paused to thank him for safety at the end of the journey. And we wanted to make up for that now and to thank him for all the occasions when we had traveled safely and had forgotten or failed to thank him at the end of the journey. Well, we started off and it wasn't very long at all until Larry realized he had problems. The brakes were not holding. Now, this is a very steep mountain road in many places. In those days, one lane. In fact, there were certain spots where the bus coming up would have to stop and adjust to get around a hairpin turn. And so as he was heading down, uh, I think we weren't by the pool yet, and he realized that the brakes were, were going. And he tried to shift into a lower gear, and you could hear the grinding of the gear, and and the, the transmission didn't hold either. Handbrake was no use. And so the bus started hurtling down the mountain. The manager in the car behind us at our peak said we were traveling close to 50 miles an hour. Now this is in pitch dark, trees on this side, and the mountain 
terrifyingly close dropping off on the other side. And as we were going around those corners, uh, Larry was anticipating the turn. He would shout to us to shift our weight from one side to the other. The bus was rocking as we were traveling. He was going in as close as he could, slapping the trees on the one side to try and uh, slow down a little bit. And somehow, supernaturally, we were able to go through this hairpin turn. And as we came towards the bottom, he realized the road came to a T. It was a highway. We were coming down on a highway. And across the highway, there was a mound of dirt, which we would have plowed into. We were all asked to get on the left side of the bus. And as he went around the corner, it was up on two wheels, shuddering as it finally dropped down and came to a rolling stop. And, you know, at that moment, there was this collective sigh as everyone realized this truth. There is a step, but a step between me and death. And as I look back on that occasion, and I think of that ride down the mountains and the confession of Larry, he knew that an angel of the Lord had taken the wheel because there was no way we could safely survive that journey. And they've since changed uh, rules about taking old school buses up to the top of the mountain. But what is in that distance, in that if there is indeed a step between me and death. What's in that space between me and death? And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? That we have enfolding us the everlasting arms. We are in Christ. He has placed us in him. We have been baptized into the Holy Spirit. And so God himself embraces us and we are immortal until our work is done. Nothing can touch us unless God allows it. That's what the Lord meant when he said to Abraham, I am your shield. Nothing gets to us unless it goes through the heart of God. It must be approved by him, allowed by him to reach us. And so we have this confidence. There is only a step between us and death. But within that step, we have the protective arms of our beloved Lord holding us and caring for us all the way home. What a wonderful thing to be saved and to be sure and to be secure because we have his arms around us. <music>